any cigarettes. Smoked carelessly and too close together. His clothes were warm and hung like rags from his frail frame. Yet the sinew of one strong muscle remained, and his eyes still held a gleam of humor, and the tenderness of many things seen. Uh, many times when cold winds had knocked against him, almost putting him down for good. But he, always having hope, had risen to receive another blow, a chuckle in his throat, a merry, robust laugh that said, You <laughs> can't get the best of me yet. But on this day, his eyes held a deep sadness. The sadness of all that he had lost, all that he had longed for, all the loves and weary travels that had come to nothing, even as his hope had soared. But he seemed to resign. He, he seemed solid. And as he opened his mouth to speak to me, I realized he had no voice. He no longer had words to express the joy, the sadness, the longing. For now, in his strong yet battered state, all was one. There was nothing more to say. As I looked at him, just standing there, he with his hands in his pockets, me in my expensive three-piece suit, I realized there was no difference between us. Yet he, for all his losses, had gained a measure of dignity, of sureness, and of sweet strength that I did not possess. He seemed made of dust, a, a golden dust, the residue of a life fully lived, of energy spent well, of love given at any cost. Suddenly, his eyes seemed on fire, his whole body ablaze with some holy energy that soon turned to pure white heat. And even more suddenly, he was gone. My body trembled, my hand shook, and when it was over and the road was empty of his presence, I felt a uh, glow within as I had ever known that a, an almost transcendent feeling, a feeling that I too was pure energy, the energy of hope, of love, and something more I dare not express. I felt whole for the first time, and I knew that his spirit had entered me, that that he had given his life to me, and that now his vision, his wisdom, his great compassion now lived in me, a great spirit that dissolved all boundaries. And I knew, I knew then that the life that I had been living was mere folly, Mere illusion, a child's life in an adult body. And so I left the road. I walked away, not knowing yet where I was going, only knowing that the life I had known would be no more, and that the path ahead, while unsure and still filled with pebbles, rocks and giant boulders to be moved aside would at last bring me to a quiet place, a resting place, a place where birds no longer sang, yet in the silence 
there would be more sweet music than I had ever known. And in that moment, as I left the road, as I took off my jacket and slung it almost casually over my shoulder, I felt a smile growing on my face, a, a lightness in my step, and I cried out. I, I love you. I, I love you. I, I love you.